Are you into tabletop gaming, like D&D or maybe Warhammer, or do you maybe just like a whole lot of board games? Have you been thinking about getting a 3D printer to really up your game? Well, this might just be the episode for you, so stay tuned. Hey, I'm Jester and Glass from Jester's 3D Tabletop Gaming, and today we're going to be talking about 3D printing and how it changed my life. Uh, really, it did. It was the best decision I ever made for my tabletop gaming needs. And we're gonna go over a few things that I think are key elements in considering getting a 3D printer. Alright, so I know what you're all thinking. Money is the first consideration when it comes to 3D printing, alright? So let's go over the first thing about 3D printing, and that is pricing. So when you're thinking about getting a 3D printer, there's a couple brands that a lot of people are looking towards right now, and that's Creality, uh, The Ender, and The Prusa. So between those manufacturers, we're going to be looking at a price range of about $300 to $1,000. If you think about it, that's cheap. When 3D printers first came out, Man, they cost you an arm and a leg. They, an arm and a leg. That is exactly what it cost. But times have changed, right? They're pumping these things out left, right, and center. And with a new printer, you're gonna have to look at getting spools of plastic, okay? Tons of different brands. Everybody seems to be making plastics these days, right? You've got your, your common, your ABS, your PLA, and your PETG. And you're looking at anywhere between $20 to $40, depending on the quality of the spool, right? There's different tolerances. Uh, the general spool of plastic is 1.75 millimeters, and right, that's where you're paying for quality because you want a nice consistent 1.75 millimeters along the whole diameter of the spool of plastic. Otherwise, you might run into a little bit of complications with your prints. And I tell you what, with uh, tabletop gaming, uh, you definitely get the most for it. Consider a model like this. That is going to cost you roughly uh, maybe 15 cents, somewhere in that window. So you can imagine what you can print with one spool of plastic if you're strictly printing models. And then with that, uh, you have upgrades. And upgrades for these machines aren't all that bad realistically. Nozzles are pretty dirt cheap. Uh, extruders, not that bad. Uh, and you're gonna want to get upgrades because you're gonna become addicted to 3D printing. It's just, it consumes you because it's so awesome! It is, it's ridiculously fantastic. I'm not even lying. I just, I love mine to pieces. Now that pricing is out of the way, we can look at the models themselves, okay? There's a lot of websites out there that are gonna give you fantastic files, which are called the STLs, okay? And once you've got one of those, bam, you plug that into your uh, slicer program, and away you go, and you're printing in no time, okay? Two websites that I use frequently are My Mini Factory and Thingiverse, and they pretty much offer a ton of free files to print. Somebody out there is making all these files and putting them up on this website for you to print, and that's cool. Then you get into some of the other websites that cost money to purchase your STL files, like Fat Dragon, Heroes Forge, and Printable Scenery. But they're all beautiful pieces of scenery, and once you, once you buy that file, you have that file to keep. I'll put a link for all those down in the description below. So now that you've got your printer, you got your files, it's time to print which is amazing. I've printed all kinds of things since I've got my machine, down to scenery, models, cosplay, gaming characters, ant farms, all kinds of stuff, and I'm not gonna stop anytime soon. Check this out. This is a piece of scenery that I printed. I can use this for Dungeons and Dragons, I can use this for Warhammer, Warhammer 40k, whatever I want. And I mean, these things print tough. I mean, obviously it comes apart. <laughs> But like, that's, I'm, I'm putting a lot of force there. And then you get to decide the parameters for your prints, right? How many walls do you want them to be thick? Uh, how much infill do you want? You can make them as strong or as weak as you want, depending on your needs. I had a Smash Bros tournament a little bit ago, and I wanted to think of a cool way to reward my, my victory winner throughout the tournament. So, I printed a Smash Bros trophy. I found the file, I printed it within a couple of hours, and boom. The winner was pretty excited. I was the winner, by the way. Yes! But it doesn't just stop there. It gets even cooler because once you have a 3D printer, you can design your own stuff. Yes, that's right. Uh, there's two websites that I, uh, that I know of right now, or I guess programs. Uh, Blender, which is a 3D modeling program, and uh, Fusion 360, which is a AutoCAD program. Uh, both of these are essentially free to get. 
Uh, I think Fusion 360 is as long as you're making less than $10,000 on it. But if you can if you can pick up these programs and and learn them inside and out, then you can make your own stuff and 3D print it. Did you have something around the house break? Try and design it. Try and print it. Uh, do you have maybe a model or a character that you would like to try and make? Hop on in. Check it out. See if you can design your very own character. And then print it. And that is the fascinating part about this hobby, is it doesn't just end at finding files that other people have created. You will become obsessed with it. You're going to try and find a way to make whatever you want and make it a reality. With your models, there is a little bit of drawbacks though. They don't come out perfect 100% of the time, right? You might have what's called layer lines, right? Because you're essentially printing layer by layer. That's, that's how a 3D printer works. All right, and depending on how much time you want to invest into a print, you're going to end up with layer lines. They may be bigger or smaller, but they are going to be there. Uh, once you, with most models, once you get them primed and painted, for the most part it's not noticeable, especially at a smaller scale for the layer lines, right? But that is something to consider. So apart from layer lines, you, you might run into support issues, okay? And that's going to be a little bit of a headache, uh, because it's, it's going to take some fine tuning on those adjustments to be able to get wonderful supports that remove easily, because having improper supports can lead to something like this. Doesn't look good, does it? So now that you bought a printer, and you found some files, and you're getting ready to print, we gotta talk about the final and last thing. And to me, that's time investment. This is, is a hobby in itself. It's not just pick up, plug and play. You're, you're gonna have a headache, or two, or three, or four. That is, it's inevitable. Uh, and that's just something you're gonna have to, uh, to work with. But don't think of it as, as a roadblock. Think of it as a challenge to better yourself, to learn your printer, to learn what all the parts are, uh, how they work, what they function, what their names are, uh, to learn what your settings are, what your settings affect, because once you get into your slicer program, you're going to realize there's a lot of settings. There's, there's, there's just a lot of settings, and there's so many variables that go into almost every print. Once you, once you get your settings dialed in, it could be great up until the point that you put in a new spool of plastic, and then you might have to make some fine-tune adjustments again from there. But you're you're looking at troubleshooting right off the right off the bat. When I got my printer, I'd actually set up two of the cords wrong, right? I thought this was simple plug and play. You know, let's just do this, let's get it done. I was in a bit of a rush. I was excited, I'm not gonna lie. I mixed up two cables and I spent hours trying to figure out what my problem was to find out it was something simple. And that's not the only time I've spent hours trying to figure out and decipher this machine. I've spent many hours uh, cruising YouTube and uh, the, the Facebook groups, the Creality CR10 Facebook group. They are amazing, by the way, and fantastic. And if you get a 3D printer and you're looking for some help, uh, I'm my, my slight suggestion is when you, when you go to seek out help from others, make sure to give them the information. You want to give them what, uh, what printer you have. You want to give them what temperatures you're running, what layer heights you're running, uh, that kind of stuff. All of the, the most important basic stuff so that they have an idea how to help you. If you come in and just say, hey, this is the print that I'm getting, right? People are going to hound you and say, well, what settings are you running? What printer do you have? So I'll save you a step. Just give them as much information as you can so that they can help you to the best of their ability. Another thing that's going to happen is some of these prints can take upwards of five hours, 10 hours, 20 hours, a day, two days, three days, four days. Four days is a long time. <laughs> it is a very long time for something to go wrong. So it's possible that you run a four day print and it fails halfway through. And that's most unfortunate. But there is kind of a slight workaround. You can always try and use your slicer program to reheight your item to about the same level so that you can maybe glue the two pieces together uh, it's not ideal, but it can work, right? There's there's a solution for most things. So there you have it. Those are my key elements that go into maybe considering getting a 3D printer for tabletop gaming. You've got your, your pricing, your models, and your time investment. And I, I believe that all of those are very powerful in the aspect that uh, this is something that you're going to be working with for a long time. It's something that you're going to grow to love. You're going you're gonna to grow to love it to pieces. I have printed so many cool things and I can't wait to show you guys. And that's what this channel is going to be all about. And I tell you right now, I am no printing master. 
I, I'm still a rookie, but I'm doing my best and I'm constantly learning as much as I can and I want to have this channel here so that I can help myself and I can help you guys all to get some wicked awesome prints and print some cool miniatures, print some terrain, maybe print some, uh, some cosplay props and that kind of stuff. So if you stick with me, we're going to have a good time. We're going to do this 3D printing journey together because I'm hooked and I hope you guys are hooked. So if you have any ideas of what you would like to see for this channel, let me know in the comments below. And I want to know if you have a 3D printer, what is the coolest and the longest print you have done? For me, personally, it's probably my Master Sword that's hanging back there. I love that thing. Huge Zelda fan. Anyhow, have yourselves a super duper good day. Until the next time, I'm Justin Glass. Uh, bye bye now.